Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen Drake Cutter Ship Buyer's Guide, going over all you need to know about this interesting new straight to flyable starter ship. The Drake Cutter is a single person starter ship that focuses on being able to do various tasks from small scale cargo hauling, delivery and very light combat. Its defining points are that it's a cheap solid starter ship with a big interior for its size and class. Designed from the ground up to be tough, versatile and user friendly, it's the perfect ship for fledgling pilots looking to find just how they fit into this verse of ours. And its flexible frame can tackle multiple roles. We believe it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, you are an integral part of the Empire and now with the Cutter you can reach the stars too. The Cutter packs 4 SCU of cargo room and plenty of wallop into a rough and tumble compact frame. It's a ship that truly embodies the spirit of Drake. Cloud Imperium devs compared the ship to a mini cutlass, but really a better comparison to me is that it's a cheap alternative to the consolidated Outland Nomad. So tech specs wise, uh, it's got two size two weapon hardpoints um, that come with two size one gimbaled bulldogs as standard, though it's media and um, sort of ship matrix says that it comes with ballistic gatlings. It doesn't. Not at the moment, anyway. Uh, it has a selection of size 1 components with two fuel and two quantum fuel tanks, so it's got going to have a bit of a range with its fuel. Um, it's got four size 1 missiles across um, two size 2 missile racks. So its armaments leave a lot to be desired, even when compared to other starter ships, unfortunately. However, it houses a variety of facilities. Its interior. It's got a big old interior. So it's got a cargo area with access ramp, which is the only entry and exit point in the ship and even when it's got its four SCU of cargo you can very easily move around in the cargo area. Uh, there's a living area with bed, shower and toilet, uh, personal storage, weapons locker and a cockpit and there's also component access throughout the ship so if you've got any sort of damage to your components you can pretty easily just run around and fix them. There's no docking collar though, the ship must land or park anywhere it wants to do business. The ship is a chonky boy and not the most maneuverable or fast. Currently its SCM speed is 160 meters a second and its top speed is 1050 meters a second. Size wise it's 20 meters by 13 meters by 6 meters so really it's not too dissimilar to the size of other small ships and starters though it's an awkward shape so it doesn't really fit very well in other ships so it won't fit in the Carax hangar for example but it is an okay size to fit in the 890 jump. It is classified as an uh, excess size two ship so any future ships with that hangar size will accommodate it as well. The ship is currently available from $40. However, there is a fantastic deal on until the 8th of December for a Drake Cutter and game package for $45 plus any taxes you have to pay. So you get a Star Citizen game package so access to the game permanently assuming you don't melt that package um, and you get the Cutter with lifetime insurance uh, as well as a white wind chill paint, uh, sort of an extra paint there. So that puts it at the same cost as a Mustang or Aurora starter pack. However, the ship is worth $45 if you want to CCU it later rather than only $30 um, if you were trying to CCU an Aurora or a Mustang. So because of that, you can upgrade it to an Avenger Titan for just $10 more. Now I know I'm saying chain some extra money, spend $45 on the game and then another 10 so $55, but you get lifetime insurance on an Avenger Titan and that ship is significantly better than any of the starter ships. So, however, as a pure starter ship, it does fill a different sort of space than the other starters do, um, other ships of its class, because it's got that lack of weaponry, it's got the lack of weapon upgrades um, for it. So that might make bounty hunting or light combat only viable for the most easy of missions. But if you want to do sort of cargo hauling or just have a ship that gets you from A to B, something that's a bit tougher and more durable potentially than some of the other starters. If you value that interior space, then this ship might be for you. The ship comes in a kind of gunmetal colour with yellow accents and some hazard stripes. I love hazard stripes. Uh, there are some skins available for the ship currently. There's a yellow light beam paint and the white wind chill paint. Both you can grab for $3 each. If you're a concierge, you can also get an orange and green groundswell paint for, I think, $5. And you can actually get that free if you're a concierge and you buy the ship standalone, if you're so inclined. Uh, in a recent 
IAE Jax McCleary video, we found out that Jax McCleary is alive, he's not dead, uh, and he's taking a Drake Cutter back to the Stanton system. So, we had a Drake Cutter FAQ as well, so let's go through some of these questions and answers. Uh, how does the Drake Cutter's armor compare to other ships in its class? The Cutter is relatively tanky to offset its lower than average shields. This is achieved partly via its armor and partly by the base structure being stronger. What advantages does the ship have versus other starters? The Cutter has a full interior, a healthy 4 SCU of cargo and generous quantum and hydrogen fuel tanks. How does the ship handle maneuverability wise? For its size, it's relatively vast in a straight line. At least Cloud Imperium said it is. I don't feel it is. Um, but it's let down by its smaller maneuvering thrusters, which don't allow it to change velocity at high speeds particularly well. Do you see the cutter being used as a snub? The cutter is probably too big of a ship to find much use in this category for anything but the largest of our ships, where it could certainly fill the role of a runabout. It's a much larger and heavier ship than our more typical runabouts though, so it's going to be quite a bit slower and more costly to fuel. However, it does have the advantage of being able to carry more than just people. Can the cutter carry any land vehicles? It can fit very small vehicles, just uh, like the Drake Mule and the Grey Cat STV. Is the cockpit separated from the cargo area to prevent venting? The cutter is split into three areas, the cockpit, hab and rear. The toilet is considered part of the hab for this purpose, so warn anyone else aboard if you are depressurizing that area. Also, I want to say the doors uh, and the way they're set up on the ship, they open in a much more snappy uh, and sensible fashion than um, other sort of automatic doors in other ships. What are the cutter's living amenities like? Bare bones is probably the nicest way to put it. You've got a bed with your very own reading light and bathroom module. There's also a little bit of shelving space to put things on and a personal storage locker. What weapons can the weapon locker fit? The weapon locker has room for two pistols, one long arm, um, such as a rifle, shotgun, or LMG, one special, such as a rocket launcher or railgun, and a multi-tool. Combat-wise, where is the cutter supposed to fit in? The cutter is quite low in the combat ratings. It's not a combat-focused ship by any metric, and its loadout reflects that. It'll have difficulties against anything combat-focused, such as an Arrow or Gladius, but will hold its own against other starter ships. How does the signature of the cutter compare to other starter ships? It has a slightly larger cross-section than most of the other starter ships due to being bigger, but the IR and EM signatures will be very similar, as it has the same size and variety of components. Can the external lighting be controlled by the pilot? Only the main headlight is controlled manually. The external lighting is triggered by the power state of the ship. Do the missile doors have clearance to open when the cutter is landed? They do, but we'd recommend not attempting to launch missiles whilst landed. And that's the cutter. If you want to do more FPS delivery and cargo stuff and not ship uh, combat, then the cutter is a fantastic choice as a starter. Or you might just want to immediately upgrade it to an Avenger Titan for $10 more. So yeah, it's... Uh, that's a much better ship. The Avenger Titan is just so much of a better ship for $10 more. It, it just it boggles in my mind, uh, unfortunately. I think they've put, made a rod for their own back, Clan Imperium, because how good that Avenger Titan is. It's a relatively cheap ship. It's, it's very cheap, in fact. It feels like they've Goldilocks priced that um, very well, but that does mean that it sort of devalues all the other starter ships. That said, I do really love the way the cutter looks. I, I like the ugly ducklings. I like Drake ships. Uh, and the fact that it's built with this sort of lightest tech and pipeline means that walking around the ship, the buttons, the lighting, the doors, and the internal spaces, they all feel really fantastic. It's hard to overcome its lack of combat capabilities, though. But what do you think? Are you going to be picking up a Drake cutter as your first ship and first game package or replacing your current starter uh, ship with a Drake cutter? Do you, do you really like it? Do you dislike it? Uh, do you love the way it looks or do you hate it? And do you think its lack of weaponry makes it a poor choice for a starter? Are you going to take advantage of that deal until the 8th of December to get the ship for $45 with the game package uh, and lifetime insurance and then sort of immediately upgrade it to another ship? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Hello. I am Winston Churchill, and I use NordVPN to defend the Internet Empire. We will fight the arts on the beaches. We shall fight on the Internet. We shall fight the trackers and the malware. Whether we want to watch Netflix for another country, or we'll have greater accessibility to the Internet. We will defend our island home. At any rate, that is what we're probably trying to do. Thanks, Winston Churchill. What? What do you mean, Zin? That wasn't Winston Churchill? 
Point still stands. Go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer to get yourself discounted NordVPN or use the links below. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For November, we're giving away a Crusader Spirit C1. It's a fantastic looking multi-role ship that can fit a vehicle in the back or a load of cargo and it looks really cool. It's got loads of forward-facing weaponry and a tractor beam. As it's a concept ship, though, the winner will have a cutlass back in the meantime as a loner. It comes with access to the game and lifetime insurance too, so bam! Even if you don't have Star Citizen stuff yet, you can get straight into the game with this. It's all you need. Just comment on any of my videos this month to be in for a chance of winning. A massive thank you to everyone that has used the join button under my videos to become a channel member and my Patreons. You guys are awesome. And it really does help the channel. Please consider becoming one of those lovely people too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the verse.